Washington. Cliff Albright is the executive director and co-founder of Black Voters Matters, and he joins us now from Atlanta. And, and Cliff, you guys are doing your job, but have you given up on Washington? No, not at all. And, and good morning to you, Dale. Not, a, not at all. You know, we're still um, fighting the fight in Washington. In fact, I'll be headed to or, or our team as long as some of our partners are going to be in Washington on Tuesday. Uh, along with our partners like League of Women's Voters and People for the American Way, leading an action at the White House. Um, you know, we'll be in D.C. We're doing a whole march along with some other partners going from West Virginia, a, a rally, a, a relay march going from West Virginia all the way to D.C. And that'll be taking place Thursday, Friday and Saturday of next week. So we still got our eyes on, on D.C. and doing actions. As you may know, I was arrested in D.C. just last week at a White House action uh, because Biden's included. We, it's not just about the Senate. We're still trying to deliver a message to President Biden that he needs to lean and he needs to do as much on voting rights as he is on, on infrastructure right now. So we still got a lot going on and actions taking place in some of the states targeting some of the senators, like actions in New York targeting Senator Schumer, uh, planning actions in Delaware, because we want them to hear from us, not just in D.C., but even when they go home for the weekend. You know, but what's interesting is that they're not listening. And, and I bring this up politely because, you know, when they got under uh, Joe Manchin's skin, when the kayakers went out to his, his houseboat on the mm -hmm. Potomac, his million dollar yacht on the Potomac, that got mm -hmm. under his skin. And I heard people saying That's they true. shouldn't have done that. That was a bridge too far. But the bottom line is I heard people talking about it. Marches, do they That's still true. work? And if they, if they don't work, why are you still doing them? Yeah, I think you, you got to have a combination of, of tactics, right? You, you, you still got to have rallies and you got to have marches, but you do need some direct actions, some civil disobedience. I've been saying this for, for months now. You know, I've been reflecting on Dr. King's letter from a Birmingham jail where he lays out the whole process and the rationale for, for nonviolent civil disobedience. Um, you know, so you got to be willing to get in the way, you know, as John Lewis would say, make good trouble. And sometimes to make good trouble, you've, you've got to be willing to, to be a little extreme, right? Not not extreme in the sense of the people on January 6th who went knocking down the, the windows and doors of the Capitol, but you, you've got to be willing to to get in people's faces, to, to sometimes be uh, um, a little confrontational. As Dr. King said, there's nothing wrong with confrontation. There's nothing wrong with tension. In fact, you need that tension in order to move things forward. So yes, we are, we're gonna be knocking on some doors, blocking some doors, locking arms, getting in some uh, elected officials' faces, especially some senators. Um, we're going to be doing all of that, but you need a combination of all these tactics, the civil disobedience, marches, rallies, and yes, phone calls and text messages and emails, all of that has a role to play. We're, we're not oppressed through just one strategy. We're not going to come out of our oppression through just one strategy. But absent that, what do you do, for instance, in, in, in a place like Georgia where they say, don't hand out any water to people that are standing in line, even though it might be 90 degrees. The same thing, I believe it is in Texas. What are the practical things that you're doing to counter the things that they're doing to stop people from voting? Because they say, I don't want to go stand in line and, and, and bake all day because it's going to be hot. Yeah. So so a couple of things. One, we're not taking any of these pieces of legislation um, as just a permanent thing. And so uh, you mentioned Georgia. Florida has the same thing. We're actually in litigation in Florida right now um, around. Um, we sue them because of the, the bill that they passed, the voter suppression bill that they're passed. So, again, that's part of the tactics. We have a legal strategy as well. So even as we're in the streets, we're also in the courtrooms fighting these things. But directly to your question is, you know, the ways that we have to get around it is that we've got to find other creative ways to still be able to provide support to voters that, that don't run afoul of, of these new voter suppression bills that they've cast. And so we're, we're going to be doing some things. We're going to be educating voters. We're going to be doing awareness campaigns. We'll be doing some stuff ahead of the lines, you know, in order to keep the lines from, from getting long. We're, again, it's about using a, a wide variety of tactics. And yes, we're going to try to organize around some of the voter suppression, but we strongly disagree with this notion that the White House has put out that we can just out organize the voter suppression at some point these bills are going to have to be stopped blocked and overturned if they've already passed and to do that we need the right tools we need the freedom to vote act in order to do that we need the john lewis voting rights act that's going to be at the end of the day our best weapon against the voter suppression cliff if you had a hundred dollars right now on the table 
Would you put it on the table saying that you believe that the voting rights legislation is going to happen? Stop laughing. Or would you put it on the table and keep it in your pocket and say, ain't going to happen and I ain't going to risk my money? Not only would, would I put it down, but I would double I would double down on it because I'm here to tell you that it's going to it's going to pass. And that's not something I'm saying because I believe so much in Joe Biden or because I believe so much in Chuck Schumer and definitely don't believe in Joe Manchin. But I believe in our people. I believe in our communities. I believe in the, the same communities that risked their lives and came out and shocked the world in, in Georgia and other states during the general election and then had the audacity to do it again during the Georgia runoff in the midst of winter and the holiday season and the pandemic. I believe in our folks. I believe that we stand on mighty shoulders uh, of our ancestors who have had to fight against similar battles. Uh, we shouldn't still be in this fight, but our history and my experience working with our communities is that we are going to win. Cliff, I was afraid you were going to ask me if you could borrow $100, and that was going to up the ante even worse. <laughs> Cliff Albright is the executive director and co-founder of Black Voters Matter. He is with us from Washington, D.C. Cliff, as always, very much. For, thank you for being with us.